in order for us to understand craniosynostosis, we have to first understand the way a baby skull normally forms and grows. And briefly, the skull is composed of different bone segments. Each of them relate to each other with a joint, seen here by these lines. These lines are called sutures. When one or more of these sutures closes prematurely, as in one of these examples here, the skull cannot grow normally, the brain cannot grow normally, and in this skull here we can see that the suture on the right side of this baby's forehead has closed, and that leads to this flattening on the right side of the forehead, leaving not just a visible deformity, but also a deformity that is putting pressure on the brain. Craniosynostosis can be a cruel disorder, and each baby is affected in a slightly different way. Some may be affected in a very mild fashion, some more severe, but in more severe cases, if left untreated, these babies can suffer blindness, brain injury from increased pressure, loss of hearing, Some babies can go on to develop scoliosis or hip problems. Uh, And even in those babies who don't, if they simply don't appear the way their schoolmates do, they're not going to be as psychosocially active and they're simply not going to be able to reach the potential that their parents wish them to. And that's something that we really don't want to see. We want to see all of these babies able to be diagnosed properly and treated properly at the best possible time, and not when it's too late, not when these have already become much more complicated cases. If craniosynostosis is diagnosed early and properly, if it is treated by a multidisciplinary craniofacial team, the outlook is bright. These babies can recover and never look back and never have any further problems.